Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable podcast, we've got the usual suspects, Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's great. There's no law of diminishing returns for that, that roar, I have to tell you. I never tire of it, ever. I will not. <laughs> we've got the most feared woman in the country. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Mark? I'm great. I'm great. We've got the breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing great. How are you, Mark? I'm good. I'm good. And of course, you know I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm rested, relaxed, and happy to be back on the show. I'm very excited to delve deeper into your R and R, and of course, last but not least, the brain, the professor, the land geek, flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Just want to remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School and the upcoming new program, Flight School Live. Wouldn't it be great if you could just cram all 16 weeks of Flight School into a magical three-day weekend with all the coaches? If you do, you want to learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, get on a call with the Zen Master or the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, and learn more. But I do think Flight School Live is going to literally be the perfect fit for that busy person that when they hear about a 16 week program, they kind of roll their eyes. Like they got to start making commitments. If you could get it all done in three days, get going, get your business literally up and running mailings out the marketing, the automation all compressed into three days and hang out with the coaches, small group, 15 people max. I think it's gonna be really special. All right, let's get on to our first topic. Bearland Aaron's case study. Um, there's nothing that I really enjoy more than maybe, I don't know, a really fine Chemex coffee. But then second to that is when Bearland Aaron, before the podcast says, I just got a wire. Let's do a case study. Bearland Aaron, what just happened? Okay. Well, I bought this property in, let's say, actually it was on my birthday, uh, last in 2018 so it was October 16 2018 um, in case anybody wants to know what my birthday is but um, I bought this thing it's uh, 1.18 acres in uh, a county in Florida and I offered 1593 1593 dollars on it um, there was just over a thousand dollars of taxes due on it but it was a pretty big lot for the area and um you know there's houses all around it the neighborhood wasn't super great but it wasn't like a crime-ridden area it was just a little bit had some uh, light industrial mixed in with the houses there so um i comped it at about 6500 and that kind of um jived with what the assessor said and they assessed at like like either 95 or 100 percent of their their value so um it kind of worked out i had some people um i had quite a bit of action on the property but um they were as kind of i'd get offers in the you know the the 4500 dollar range um i didn't when take any action on the property where were you marketing it everywhere i was um, actually I had not put it on, uh, Facebook, but, um, it gone out to my, my, uh, mail list. It had gone, um, it was on Craigslist rotation all the time. Um, and I'd marketed it to, you know, quite a few areas that tend to like Florida property as well as the Florida areas. Um, let's see. And I think it was on land moto. It was on Zillow and, um, it also gone on the Land Moto um, Platinum Blast and that sort of thing too. So um, I had, you know, quite a bit of leads from it. And, uh, but 
everybody was kind of offering in the $4,500 range. So it, you know, I, I went back through and I kind of was in the process of reassessing my comps. Um, when this lady called, actually she, uh, she saw it through Zillow and, um, sent me a lead through Zillow. Um, and that was in early January. Um, you know, nothing came of it other than she went, you know, she started going through my funnel, um, through my autoresponder series and, and that sort of thing. And she gave me a call, um, a couple days ago and she said, um, actually it was her brother-in-law that gave me a call or her brother. Um, she didn't speak English very well, so she wanted him to call me first. So I talked to him and then, you know, he, he got us together and she loves the property and you know she's she owns a couple more she's going to invest but she may build there so she put uh three hundred dollars down with the 249 documentary fee um and we actually agreed on a price of five thousand because you know the market had been speaking to me like scott likes to uh teach and i realized that i might have overpriced it a little bit and rather than waiting for what i thought it was worth i went ahead and took you know, a decent offer that pretty much doubled my money. So, and I got the wire just a couple minutes ago. I love it. I love it. Uh, Zen Master, Mike, what's your big takeaway on that? Well, the big p takeaway, I think, is that he had the, the stamina to stay with it. I mean, so often we talk to people that, you know, they get tire kickers and they get a little, uh, you know, they get beat down or initially because they think it's going to sell with the first two people that talk to them. If it doesn't, they get frustrated. I remember last year talking to a couple of people uh, and they had been posting ads and, and they uh, it was the beginning of this year actually. And um, you know, they weren't, they were, they were like, Mike, we're tired of the uh, same old tire kickers. And I said, just stick with it. It's a consistency issue. And then they sold like, like five or six properties within a, within a week, you know, after a few months of this kind of dealing with tire kickers. So I think the one of the biggest takeaways I have is that he had the, you know, the, the mindset, the correct mindset to stick with the process. This process works, but you have to engage it. You have to stay consistent with it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Mimi, how about for you? Well, a couple things. Um, some properties sell fast, some sell slower. You just got to persist, right? Just got to keep up with it. Um, and then I had some folks on flight school office hours say the same thing, that they were tired of tire kickers. I think that um, a lot of the times you think people are tire kickers, but they just have to get farther down in your funnel, right? Uh, our deal of the week is, is really just an extension of our sales funnel, the, the email addresses and the front that we get on Facebook and Craigslist leads, right? So they may seem like a tire kicker, but sometimes you just have to warm them up and maybe it takes three months, maybe it takes six months, maybe you don't have the right one out in the property that they want out there yet, right? Um, so folks that may seem like tire kickers, if they're willing to give you some contact information, even uh, they don't buy from you, they may buy from you eventually. Um, but, and then for tire kickers, if you're really tired of them, hire a VA that can filter that stuff out for you and then give you the hot leads. So that's the way I'm doing it now. And I don't have to deal with those tire kickers. I just get a list of people I need to call and, and yeah. close the deal, close the deal. And that's been a lot easier. Yeah, no. And you know, just to hammer home the point, like I, I just read somewhere that no one's going to buy until they've had five to 12 touches with you. So you get, that's got to be the expectation. They need at least, you know, at least five interactions with you before they're going to pull their wallet out. So I think Mimi makes a, a really strong point. You know, everyone can kind of start out as a tire kicker, right? But then you warm them up and then they're going to go and be a, a great buyer. Uh, Tate, what was your takeaway? My takeaway was that he was um, flexible and willing to listen to what the market was saying. You know, I love the fact that he wanted one price, but when somebody offered him something where he was still making a great return on it, he didn't, you know, scoff. At it. He didn't walk away and say, no, nah, I'm just going to hold out and wait a little bit longer. I think uh, Aaron embraced the, the idea of some, bro some profit beats no profit. And right now, sure, he didn't get the full amount that he wanted, but I'm looking at this guy and he's pretty happy. You know, I, I think he considers this to be a huge win. And that's my takeaway. You know, it all adds up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the nice thing is when you have solid deal flow, 
it's easy to double your money knowing where that money is then going, right? And you're going to roll it over into what might be a better investment where you're going to make that 300 to a thousand percent. Not that anyone's going to complain about doubling their money, but maybe Scott Todd would complain about it. Uh, Scott, what was your takeaway? <laughs> well, for, first of all, I would not complain about doubling my money. Ba basically, you know, I, I always believe in the get in and get out approach, right? You know, like the sooner you can get out of this thing, the better. So get into the deal and then get out of it. I, I don't care what the margin is. Any profit beats no profit. And so when you try to hold on to these things because you have valued it at some price, well, I always say that your first offer is your best offer. And when you don't accept it, guess what, man? It, you will pay for, for it. Just take that first offer as long as it's reasonable and you're still making money and move on. Get the money moving again. Mark, look, I got a problem right now. I got a property that um, I, may have, I may have gotten a little aggressive with in terms of my buy price. And you know, I thought, hey, I could sell this property for this amount of money. I'll tell you the deal. I bought this property for $70,000 thinking I could sell it for 200,000 and I've been sitting on it now for months and I've had people look at it and they just leave. Okay. Like they, 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 they ghost me, they stop responding. Basically, I don't know, about five months ago, four months ago, we got someone who accept, who offered a hundred thousand dollars. I could have made $30,000 and I said, no, why? Because I valued this thing at 200, but Someone else valued it at a hundred. I should have taken the hundred, made 30,000, okay, $25,000 profit and been done with it and moved on with life. Now it's one of these things that I own that I don't even want. Yeah, I wish you told me about that deal before you said no. Uh, you wanna buy it? Maybe. Okay, we'll talk. But you know, but the point being like, you know, that's happened to me so many times in my early days that now I, I know that I'm not the market. And just because I think it's worth this, um, it's, you know, it's not what the market wants. Now, that being said, you might look back a month from now, Scott, and be so happy that with that $150,000 offer, right? And glad that you didn't sell it. But again, you're right now you're, you're kicking yourself, right? right? Because you're seeing all the other places you could employ that, that $25,000 profit, actually yeah. that $95,000 now into another, into other deals. That's right. Which would, which would yield even, you know, a higher yield. So I, I thought that was a, a really great case study, Berlin Aaron. So uh, thanks for, for sharing it. You know what I liked about it? I liked the down, I like the processing fee. These people, the, 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 the odds that they're going to default is really low. I mean, they put enough down that, you know, it's not like 99 down and no, uh, you know, uh, no processing fee kind of thing. So let's transition now into a la clicky laka is the place to be. Tay Litchfield just got back from Hawaii. It's good to be Tate. I'm actually going to have a hat that says that. It's good to be <laughs> um, we're going to have those at boot camp. So maybe like him, like, like his logo will be like cycling and then fishing. You know, like at the same time. At the same time. So, Tate, tell us a little bit about just the whole process of preparing to leave, being there, and then, you know, getting back into the business. Like, what was that experience like for you? And what happened with the business? Well, I mean, I will say this it's not the first time that I've kind of disappeared and gone MIA within the business for an extended period of time. So this time around, I was much more relaxed because previous times when I'd gone on family vacation or just needed to kind of unplug a little bit from work, I really stressed out about having things fall apart or the mail is the mailing still going to go out? Is, you know, our is due diligence going to continue? What about intake? How about sales, et cetera? This time around, I was much more uh, you know, at ease with it because I've been working with the same group of people for a long enough time to where they don't need my hand. You know, they don't need me to handhold them, right? They know, oh, today is Tuesday. On Tuesdays, we do the deal of the week. They know these things. I don't need to check in and remind them. So preparing to leave, I basically let everyone know, hey, I'll be gone. I will have my phone on me, but I'm only going to check 
my email for about an hour each day. I'm trying to spend more time with the family. And everybody was okay with it. They understood the process. They knew what I needed to do. And I told them if there's an emergency, you know, feel free to reach out. But I reminded them that there's never a land emergency. I mean, if somebody's upset or wants a refund, tell them we'll get back to them when I get back in the office next week, you know. So leaving was pretty stress-free. While we were there, I checked in, uh, you know, I'm looking at my pipe drive account, I'm looking at LG Pass, I'm, I'm tracking the metrics just on a daily basis to see that, hey, things are still happening. And not necessarily to my surprise, but we had a few deals, which was really nice. Deal of the week got sent out, people were happy, it was well received, mailing continued as normal. And I think that's only possible because of trial and error, right? You have to go on these, tri on these trips and you have to stress test your business, right? If you don't do that, you'll never know where those problems are. There was a few things that I identified while I was gone that, okay, we need to improve this a little bit. Or the interface or the interaction, I'm a bottleneck on that part. I didn't even realize I was. Um, so I'm going to work over the next couple of weeks to, to adjust that. But for the most part, I spent my day on the beach, running around, ch chasing fish, watching sunsets and just enjoying myself. And this, I mean, that's what this passive income lifestyle affords. If you're not doing that as a land investor, then you're not living a good life. I mean, what's the point? Go get a nine to five. If you're not relaxing and spending time with your family, you're doing it wrong. So how often did you check email? Well, I, I did have my phone on me and, you know, we obviously Hawaii's in the U S so, you know, we had internet service and 4g and all of that, but I brought my laptop with me. I only used my laptop for probably about 20 minutes a day. And I don't do email minutes. on my phone. I don't do email on my phone. So um, I don't know. I think while I was there, I probably spent two hours on the business. And that was kind of checking in with some coaching clients, answering a few voxes, texting you pictures to make you jealous. I mean, that's kind of work, you know, because I had to get the right angle and the lighting good and everything like that. So, but for the most part, I really didn't do anything. That, see, that, that's, that's a proper vacation. I can't tell you how many people, you know, I know that they go away with their family, but they're not really away. Well, and that's and the hard part about this. Really present. It's yeah. hard with this business. I mean, truly it is because my mind is spinning constantly. I'm always thinking about how to improve and new deals and new opportunities. And I love buying raw land. I love it. I mean, and so typically I try to like go somewhere where I don't have my phone, right? It's not on because I'm out of the country or something like that. But I told Allison what I was trying to do and how I needed to just relax and do nothing. And she kind of took my phone away and, you know, it was great. It's hard to get lost on an island. That's the other thing. I mean, when we're driving place and it's like, go down the road and go left. That's where the restaurant is. It's like, no need to uh, use ways for that one. So. No, it's great. And you know, when Daisy becomes a teenager, she'll probably lovingly, when you're not completely present um, on vacation, start singing and the cats in the cradles and the silver spoon, <laughs> like my kids do to me. And then I, I know. Oh, that. You're, you're really good when you go on vacation. I mean, we can have somebody making a huge offer and it's like, well, let me talk with Mark real quick. And it's like, Mark, the guy wants to pay, you know, crazy amount of money. And you're MIA, man. You, you, you unplug pretty well. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm better at it. I'm better at it now, but I, I still, I still slip. I still slip. Um, so Terrace Hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Are you, are you able to get away like that? Is, is your business stress test, stress tested enough? The business works okay. I have a hard time letting go. I have a hard time leaving my house without my iPad. I'm starting to catch a lot of crud from my family about it. So I have to find 
time is, it's just so much fun. I want to do it all the time, especially as it's growing and it's getting bigger and I have hot deals I'm working, you know? So yeah, I have to work on that. Yeah. I mean, the dopamine hit is a real thing. Like I, I love checking email because something good might happen. Right. And usually it does. And it's like, Oh, this feels so good, but it can wait. I'm still trying to check email twice a day. And I use that adios so that it doesn't go to my inbox until 10 and four, but you can still cheat that a little bit. I've been cheating a little bit lately. Um, I'm trying to get back on it. I, I sound like an alcoholic. I'm an email holic. It's not great. Um, Zen Master Mike, can you uh, can you slip away like Tate? Yeah, I I I, I can, and um, I think it just this whole story just illustrates the the niche within the niche, or the niche within the niche, or whatever you, or the nichey within the nichey. Uh, we we so, not only so, do we so pretentious to say niche. It's tr- It's correct. We had this whole discussion, like, is, is it niche? Is it niche? Niche? Is that a word? Or does Mark make that up? I don't know. Is it, is think, it Bible on Scrabble? Yeah, I made that up. <laughs> but the idea is that uh, not only do we do land investing, we teach people systems, automation, how to build a team, right? How to build a process that allows us to do that. So um, I think we do that better than anyone as a group. And that sets us apart from others who try to, you know, uh, teach this business. Is we we teach what Tate's talking about, right? This is how we go through it. So yes, I can. But I also think that there's, aside from vacations, I still think there's ways to relax within the business. And that's just me. Like I love having like my email application. I like having Chuck on my phone because it ties in with Maelstrom. I love Maelstrom. And so I'll go on this Chuck because if you have Maelstrom, which is like this organizing email, uh, you know, application you could have on your computer, then you get Chuck Pro and you can go in there and have filters. And I'll tell you, not, not all vacation. I'm just talking about how you can use the biz. I'll sit down there and I'll be like, zing, zing, and just like breathing, relaxing, uh, and just, you know, and getting meditative by doing the business and cleaning out my inbox. So okay, I'm straying a little bit. I'm topic drifting, but I'm just trying to say that you can still relax within the biz. But yes, what, what, what Tate's talking about is huge. It's, it's so important. And, and we teach it so well here. And I love that. Bearland Aaron, how about you? Well, what Tate was able to do is, I guess, the is the goal, really, right? Um, to be able to have that freedom to do those things. You know, um, as he stated, he's not at the, the complete pinnacle yet because he found some things that he wants to work on, and that's probably always going to be the case. But, you know, the ability to go and um, spend that, time with your family or do the things that you uh, really value. Um, Not only are they going to help you uh, become more complete as a person because they're your values, um, but they also let you recharge, you know, and everybody needs to recharge. Even if you don't have, you know, if you're not spending eight to 10 hours in a business every day, um, you know, some of that high level thinking, um, is just as tiresome. So you need that recharge. Um, so I guess, you know, I aspire to be at that point one day, I'm not yet, but you know, I will be. So, you know, I guess it's definitely something to look forward to achieving. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we can get, I guess this is an opportunity for Scott Todd to talk about flight lessons and how he's pretty much able to to do whatever he wants, whatever he wants, with whomever he wants. Like, what am I going to ask him about stress testing his business? Um, it's more like, Scott, how do you charge up to do anything now? <laughs> okay, well, for, first of all, I, I wish I could be like Tate and just get away. But, you know, I've got the phone in my pocket. And, uh, like, I, I don't know. I as bad yeah, as You got to be swimming more, Scott. That's the problem. If you're maybe, Yeah, I mean, maybe if I was swimming more. But, like... You look, we need a fish. Let's go fishing, Scott. Okay, maybe we will. But Mark, let me ask you a question. Let me challenge you. Like, I know the email, like the dopamine hit, all the other things, right? I know, I know it's not the, the best way. But if you get joy from checking your email, why not do it? That's a good question. I, well, because I'll tell you why not. Because fair, it's high 
it's hijacking your attention, right? So your life is moment to moment. Do you want to look back on your life as, you know, basically this little thing in your hand hijacking your attention all, every, all, all these moments, right? There's so many other things to do with your time and attention than get these little dopamine hits. Like I, I prefer not, like I would rather find joy. And then we can get into a whole existential conversation on actual joy, right? Like I just did that crazy 20 minute Peloton workout you told me to do. There was not a second of joy in it. But I'll tell you what, now that I've done it, I feel pretty good about it. Did, yeah. did, I, did, I, did I beat you? Did I beat you? <laughs> I, I don't even check the, the stats because I assume uh, you're going to beat me every time. I will. I'll check you're just, it. You're just in better shape than me. Well, look, that, that's the point. It's like, because we tell people like, build the passive income, build the lifestyle that you want, right? And man, if, if you want to go waste your time, and I admit it's wasting my time, check an email because email is in fact a, uh, a, a dead end. It, it really doesn't do any, any good. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm kicking myself because right before this call, I checked my email. Why? I don't know because I use audios.io too. Io. Like you do, I use that as well, the audios thing, but it, it stores it up and releases it. And then I have like all these filters built in to like get rid of all the spam and whatever. But I got to tell you something, like when I went to go check my email before this, even though it wasn't released, I went into the little secret hidden folder to kind of circumvent the system. I had 56 email and I got anxiety. Okay. Whereas if I just would have let it go through the process, what would have happened is it would have gone through its process. And then um, I probably would have ended up with maybe 10 because all the filters would have kicked in and all the other stuff would have just happened. But you're right. It does. If it creates anxiety for you or if it's, taking away from those moments, you know, like, honestly, I'll look sometimes because um, like I'll be at dinner and then like I'm on my phone and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I feel guilty. So, you know, essentially you're right. You should just put it away, but that's always a battle. I think I have to fight the battle as well. No, no. I, I think we should do like a land geek, uh, you know, silent meditate meditation retreat for like a week and just go and just be There's no talking. You just, you just be, and uh, that would be interesting. I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> I'm really getting into this Waking Up app by Sam Harris. So, you know, I think it'd be interesting. I think it would be interesting. It just sounds a little boring. I mean, a week? <laughs> Mark, I, I'm a millennial here. Like that? That's a big, that's a big ask, you know, like just because I wasn't doing work stuff doesn't mean I wasn't like, you know, playing on my phone. I mean, I don't want everybody to think that I'm this like anti, anti-technology guy. I still messed around on my phone and was taking photos and those kind of things. But I mean, I think if you really, really want to test your business and see how well you've built your team in the machine, you do need to stress test it. You need to say, I'm going to take off for two days and I'm going to leave my iPad at home, right? I'm going to go an entire day without checking my email for work just to make sure that my offers get sent out. I mean, I think, I think maybe what we need to do is challenge people more frequently to say, take a 24 hour break from your land business and see if your VAs are able to continue to keep things moving. I think that's a really good takeaway. No, absolutely. And, I, you know, you know, be interesting is at the, uh, the six month mark in one-on-one -on -one coaching, that could be like one of our, our sort of challenges and yeah. just say, okay, let's just see how you do with this. And, um, because at that point they should, half of their, of their team and, and half the systems and automation should already be built, if not fully built by that time. Well, you know, um, you can, you can actually go look a little bit further than that with with people that maybe aren't as far along in the process like when you get a section that you think is hey I've got this set you can just take a break from that section you know not the whole business but just you know stress test parts you know and make that a, a regular part of your of your business you know once a month you stress test 
you know, each like one part a week or something like that. And you take a, a full day or two days off from that part and see what happens. And then, you know, down the road, when, when you do want to take a vacation like Tate, you can have some confidence in knowing that, Hey, all these sections, you know, have, have had the, uh, the initial stress test. Let's see how it happens as a whole now, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, the technician, Eric Peterson is in, uh, Colorado right now skiing with the family. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when he gets back. And um, if he was able to fully enjoy the slopes or if he was on the slopes or on the chairlift checking email, you know, calling sellers. Well, he was, he was texting me pictures of the powder. So uh, he, I think he's doing okay. I think he's pretty unplugged. I, I'm pretty sure he's doing well. He's doing well. Which leads us now to the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. For the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a quote, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So last week I had a guy that was very interested in some property of mine and his comment to me was, but the crime there is so bad that I just don't, I can't, I can't get myself to do it. And so I keep a list of websites, uh, magazine links, URLs, you know, just information. And usually my ad copywriters use them to get content for ads. So these are two of them, areavibes.com and neighborhoodscout.com. So I can go and look, I looked up crime in Northport, Florida on Area Vibes and it told me that, for instance, Northport, total crime was less than like half what it is in the rest of Florida and half what it is nationwide. So I, I had no idea, honestly, until I checked that out. And then I could actually look at like a heat map on this uh, neighborhoodscout.com. And it showed me my property was actually in the safest part of Northport. So um, he ended up buying the property last Thursday, so it's just a it's just another site that has information about your counties. If you search for a little town and don't get anything, just go to the next biggest town and it'll give you information. So, just, just wow. Have There's all kinds of other information in there too, besides crime. So, um, this is interesting. This is interesting. I'm I'm checking one of uh. One of my neighborhoods right now, and huh? That's stuff to do. Demographics, you know. It's definitely interesting. This is really good. Wow, this so, is really good. Yeah, so my ad copywriter can go get some print screens of some of that information, and, and you know. And I can include it in some of my advertisements. You know, crime in the area is super low. That kind of stuff. Huh. Yeah. Very, very cool. Very cool. What do you like better, neighborhood scout or area vibes? I don't know, right? The the area vibes compared it to statewide and countrywide. So for comparative purposes, that was great. But the heat maps actually was, it was more granular and told me inside my subdivisions where the safest areas were. So I don't know, I take them all. I add them to my list of links that I use for ad content. Very, very cool. Well, I thought today's podcast was great. Um, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them to please help us out. If you're getting value from the podcast, simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Uh, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. So please do that. Also, um, another reminder, start learning about Flight School Live. I really think it's going to be a game changer for those busy folks that just want to get up and running again, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training to get all the details on that. And, uh, we ready to do this one, two, three. Let's
Freedom, Freedom ring. ring. Pretty good, actually. Not bad. Not bad. It's the better one, the faster. Yeah, I think yeah. we're dragging it out too long. Yeah, yeah, that's true. By the way, boot camp's coming up pretty soon. April. I'm excited. Yeah, there were a lot of folks from the flight school office hours that I did last night. Uh, there are a lot of them going. So I was really excited to see all the folks that are going to go. Get to meet people face to face. Yeah, it, it's so good. There, there's nothing like that that live piece of it. That's why I think Flight School Live is going to be so special because, you know, they're going to get to know each other in that flight school group um, at a different level than if it was just virtual with the regular flight school. Not that there's nothing wrong with regular flight school because then they go to boot camp and meet each other, but. You, you know what I think would be cool about Flight School Live? Like when I'm sitting down to watch a new series on on Netflix, does anybody like check to see how many episodes or how many seasons are available? Does anybody do that? Yeah, right? sure. I do. And if I see that like it's got too many seasons or episodes, I won't commit to it. I won't watch that series because it's going to take up too much time. Right. I like <laughs> flight school because, and, and this goes back to why I like all the British shows, Mark, because they're like, you know, eight episodes long. They're perfect, right? Yeah. I, l- I love Black Mirror, by the way. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So, so like Flight School Live, it'll be the same thing. Like for people who are thinking, oh, 16 weeks, that's a lot of showing up. That's a lot of commitment. I'd rather just go and get this done and learn it and spend time face to face with Scott Todd. I mean, that's powerful. Now, for those of us who, you know, don't mind 16 weeks with Scott Todd, I mean, Flight school traditional is way to go, right? Right, right. I mean, if you're the kind of person that, you know, prefers like an audio book to listen to it on like 2x speed versus, you know, reading the book, Flight School Live, right? Is that a good analogy or no? Maybe, you know, maybe I, like I would say, I would say that bo- both have, both versions have solid merit. Flight School Live, I think, is the uh, let's, let's just, Let's just absorb as much as we can in the weekend, right? You know, like, or just, let's just get our businesses off the ground because we're going to mail live on the very first day. Normally, it takes, you know, three weeks to get the mailing process going. We're going to literally mail live on that first day. The letters are go out the door before we end the day. And then the very next day, we're going to work as hard as we can by the end of the weekend to hopefully at least get you leads. But ideally we want to walk you out of that with a sale. Oh, I think we can sell. Like that's there. Think about that for a minute, Mark. Someone shows up to flight school live. They don't know anything about the land business and we could literally, we believe we're going to take them from like mailing out the door right there. First day to the second day, literally selling a property, maybe the third day. And if not, at least they're gonna have some leads that they can work on and know what to do next because they're gonna have the coach right there with them, holding their arms, arm in arm. So it's a big undertaking, but now let's, let's compare that to flight school traditional. Flight school traditional might be the slower way to go. You might say it's like the, 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 the building of the solid, really strong foundation. Not saying that you can't do that from the flight school live, but flight school live, you're still going to have a lot of work to do when you go back home. You're still going to have to do all of that work. There's no, there's no getting around all of the work that you have to do. The difference is in the way that you learn it, the compression of it versus you know, the, the go and do. So are you, are you an instant gratification type of a person? Well, then you need to be with us on a weekend. If you like to have things drawn out and like to build over time and learn over time, and you're looking for that like project for the, that, that will help you, that's a flight school traditional is a good way to go to. Yeah. I've got a lot of emails saying, gosh, I, I wish you guys had that when I first started because I would have loved to do that. I think it's just so, options, it right? It, it allows you to look and say, Hey, both options are going to help you kickstart your land investing journey. It's all about tailoring what type of education you want to get. And I think that's the powerful thing here. 
regardless of what you do, it's going to require hard work. It's going to require you stepping outside of your comfort zone and forming your own habits, but each will allow you to get that end result that you're after. So I don't think you can lose. It's just a matter of picking the right one for your personality. No, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I, uh, I'm breaking my fast now, Mike Zeno. Nice. Raw meat. You ready? Are you, are you still doing that crazy meat thing? Mostly all protein, right? I'm on a, a keto diet now, yes, but mostly, uh, m- m- mostly uh, just protein, not all meat, but, you know, fish, chicken, meat, raw meat. You don't miss Bacon. pasta? No. Don't miss it at all. I've broken my, uh, my, my carb addiction. I've gotten to the other side. <laughs> That's impressive. I, 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 I've, I've been a week sugar free. Huh? Protein pasta? Yeah. Well, Z- zoodles. 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 Good idea. I was just trying it. I'm trying. I like to experiment. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, well thanks, everybody. Um, see everyone next week.